everybody, it's your friend and your guy and your favorite <laughs> Linux grandpa, Gardner, the Linux gamer. I'm at least an Android grandpa. This video is possible only through the support of the 123 amazing people over on Patreon who support me on a monthly basis. And I just need to give a special shout out to Glenn Steen, one of my top tier Singularity members. Glenn, your support is truly humbling. If you like this video, why don't you leave a, leave a little thumbs up. Hit that thumbs up button down there, right, right below the video there. Thumbs up really helps the show out. If you don't like it, you can also uh, tell me that you don't like it by hitting that thumbs down button. If you like this video enough though, you can smash that subscribe button. It, it's, a, it's a way of, of showing your support and increasing an, an arbitrary number uh, by one. So uh, if you hit that subscribe button, you'll be uh, increasing my uh, prestige level here on YouTube. And uh, really that's all that it's good for. It's not good for anything else. Um, if you want to like support this show in a way that actually matters, though, you can head over to LBRY. That's beta.lbry.tv slash at the Linux Gamer. Uh, it's, it's a good time over there. I really like their platform. It's growing. It's maturing at an, at an exponential rate. And I really like the way that uh, LBRY works. So head over there. Check it out. They're really cool. All right. So we got to talk about this because... Uh, typically, you know, in, in the Linux world, we don't really have malware, right? Like malware isn't generally a thing. When we have malware, what's happening is it's, it's targeting servers and it's like stealing CPU time so that it can compute Monero coin or whatever the hell, you know, virtually worthless crap that costs more than it's actually worth to produce. So Monero coin that, you know, all these Bitcoin miners and stuff, eh whatever that actually happened to me at my uh, old day job where i had uh, i think i had an ssh daemon and it was running uh version 7.2 i want to say i don't i don't remember exactly the number hold on let's look this up yeah i think it was 7.2 and there was a known vulnerability so all of a sudden there was a russian hacking group that was mining bitcoin or monero i think it was actually on my server and it was disguising itself as a php process uh it was pretty crazy. And and most of the time, you know, and, and this time included, you know, this this kind of stuff is pretty rudimentary. It's it's basically they take a known vulnerability. They uh, they exploit the vulnerability to in, inject some uh, code into like a, a temp directory. Even it was at this point. And then basically they they install uh, the the process to run in your cron tab and just keep running it and keep running it and gain persist persistence that way. It's pretty pretty rudimentary stuff when it comes right down to it. It's not sophisticated. There's not a whole lot going on with it. It's pretty pretty basic. And you know what? That seems like it's going to change because uh, Evil Gnome uh, is this new malware that exists that's been found in the wild. And so this was found by Intezer and, and their uh, security research uh, group. They, they do, uh, ma they, they build themselves as a genetic malware analysis. Uh, so they, they like take apart malware and they create like a genetic a genome for it and, and, and compare malware and see, you know, see the strains and as they evolve and, and stuff like that. And, uh, this is very interesting because this is called Evil Gnome. I'm not going to say Gnome here because this isn't Gnome. It's it's a Gnome extension called Evil Gnome. Uh, and for everyone who has given me so much grief, Gnome is based on, is like a GNU thing. So the G is G. I know that Gnome is pronounced Gnome, but Gnome is pronounced Gnome. I can't put it more clearly or succinctly than that. <laughs> so what the heck even is Evil Gnome? Well, that's uh, a fantastic question. Evil Gnome is a shell extension for Gnome. And uh, if you're not familiar with Gnome and you don't know how it works, Gnome uh, ha is like, it works kind of like a web browser where you can have extensions, uh, you know, like Adblock and whatever. But on Gnome, you can do awesome things like, you know, adding in, uh, uh, like modifying the way, you know, task switching works and changing. Yeah, I even did a video re recently about uh, uh, a total rewrite from uh, of of how window arrangement works uh, it, and it's really cool there's a link up here um but evil gnome is a shell extension that spies on you 
<laughs> and that's uh, pretty crazy to me. So, you know, one of the reasons that uh, Linux doesn't have that many pieces of malware that target it is because Linux in general is pretty much a, a very small target in the first place. So if you're going to, if you want to, you know, write some code that's going to be effective against a lot of people, write it for Windows, you know, even write it for Mac OS before you write it for Linux. And the other thing is that Linux, you know, most of these hackers like to use Linux and these, these black hat guys like Linux more than they like anything else. So why would they attack the system that they like the, the best? But what I find so strange about this is that with Linux market share being what it is, <laughs> they decide to write malware not for Linux, but for a desktop environment that's used by a fraction of that <laughs> freaking tiny market share. It's like, I don't understand the, the mentality here. I mean, maybe they are legitimately wanting to target a very high profile single target and they and they want to do it uh, effectively. I don't know. The, the way this is delivered is, it seems rather sophisticated compared to some of the other stuff that we've seen. So what's going on here? Well, Evil Gnome has uh, a couple of modules and uh, each of these modules do something a little bit different. Uh, the first thing is that uh, they, this called Shooter Image. This first module is called Shooter Image and it takes screenshots. And it takes those screenshots and it sends it to the command and control server. From now on, I'm going to say C2 instead of command and control. Uh, so the C2 server, uh, which is like the coordinating server that controls all of the installations of this malware. Uh, the second module is called uh, Shooter Sound. And it listens to your microphone, records that information, and sends it to the C2. That's crazy i don't like the idea of that uh thankfully this microphone is controlled by that mixing board which has its own independent power source and can't be micro uh you know monitored without that mixing board being on and it's not a whole lot of the time uh but still i mean you know not everybody has a setup like this and i think even uh the webcam that i have for streaming has a microphone built in so you know nobody's safe <laughs> The next module is called Shooter File, and it uploads files. It exploitates files, it, it uh, looks through the, the system, finds a file that it wants to upload, and then it uploads it, uh, which is scary. <laughs> And finally, there's Shooter Ping, and Shooter Ping connects to the uh, C2, and it asks for uh, new information, new commands. Uh, you know, it's it's kind of standard fare at that point. Uh, there's also a unimplemented key logger. Uh, really, only the name Shooter Key exists. Uh, it, it doesn't have any functionality be beyond the name. But that led Indizer to uh, suspect that this was uploaded prematurely like before this uh was ever finished um so evil gnome apparently is a uh an unfinished piece of malware that can do quite a bit of spying on you um and it targets good the gnome linux desktop i mean you know you can actually get gnome on some other uh operating systems so maybe they are wanting to target bsd with gnome on it who knows? But at this point, it's like, this is this is scary to me. So one of the things about Evil Gnome is that it actually gains persistence, much like other Linux malware has, uh, by adding itself to your cron tab. And it executes uh, the shell script that launches the shell extension once every minute. Um, in the eventuality that Evil Gnome can't reach its C2 server, it will actually store files in a temporary directory, a uh, temporary subdirectory of the shell extension. Um, and then it will, once it's able to connect to the C2 server again, it exfiltrates that data. So Intezer is also reporting that the, uh, the, the majority of this code is unique. Uh, they have never seen anything like this code before uh so that means that this is custom written software to do whatever it's meant to do uh which is bonkers <laughs> like why, why like i i don't know how this could be profitable for someone to to target such a small group but who knows and all the communication with the c2 server is encrypted um using a russian version of a free software library, uh, an encryption library. Uh, so that leads us to the fact that this is 
possibly connected with a Russian hacking group. So Intezer is reporting that this uh, this malware is actually sharing a, uh, its C2 IP address with uh, a hacking group from Russia called Gamma Redon, uh, and that it also tries to establish SSH connections over port 3436, which is an uncommon uh, SSH port. And uh, what they've found is that there's a handful of Gamma Redon SSH servers that use the same port, 3436. Um, that that leads them to believe that this is also part of the Gamma Redon group. Uh, this is some of their software. Uh, if this is Gamma Redon group, this is their first known Linux malware. I, I just can't get my head around the fact that there's a hacking collective that find it uh, profitable, maybe. I don't know what their rationale for hacking Linux would be. Like, I just don't understand that, you know? So the question, I guess, is how do you stay safe from this? Uh, and, and really, uh, you stay safe by... Uh, uh, being smart with your your usage of your computer uh at the time of reporting uh which uh, Intezer published their thing in uh in early july there were no malware definitions for any major antivirus software um which meant that uh, you know if you're running clam av it wouldn't have picked this up uh second this malware is distributed as a self-extracting archive uh, it, it can be shipped as a dot run file, though that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, anything. The hacker group has also been uh, associated with spear phishing attacks where they specifically target individuals with and in like craft uh, very particular messages uh, at individuals in order to make their malware seem more legitimate. Um, don't execute suspicious files especially through email <laughs> that kind of goes without saying uh the third thing you can do is to check and see if you actually have been compromised now it's not very likely that you have been but uh you can check in uh your home directory under the dot cache slash gnome software slash gnome shell extensions directory for a file or a folder called gnome dash shell dash ext uh if you have that there you can delete it uh, that would be a bad thing. That would be malware. <laughs> um, you can also uh, check your cron tabs uh, to make sure that there's no uh, GNOME shell ext.sh being executed every minute. Um, yeah, I think that that's uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, it's very interesting to see uh, Linux getting like this kind of like desktop malware. Like, how, did you ever expect that you would see something like this? Let me know down in the comments what you think, because I'm very interested. Does this mean that this is the year of the Linux desktop? <laughs> I, I think that's going to be it for this video, guys. If you believe in the work that I do, you can support this show with the with a monthly contribution over on Patreon. I'm now on LibrePay, which is the free and open source alternative to Patreon. Uh, so you can check out the description for links to that. Uh, you can also pick up a T-shirt if you uh, want to support the show that way. Um, but yeah, I think that's going to do it. So. If you, hit, if you like this video, hit that like button. It really helps the show out. You can also share this video with your friends. But no matter what you do, don't forget to subscribe to see more from me, the Linux Gamer. And as always, thanks for watching.